So I'm back out at my shop. After this past weekend, we did the uh, MKE Real Street Takeover. And then uh, the following day, we did the uh, Anarchy No Prep Race, where I went out first round. Uh, lit the tire up against Frankie Stotts. Like, uh, I, got, I had nothing. It just spun the tire, and that was it. Um, can't make mistakes against dudes like that. So uh, uh, only one pass on Saturday. Then on Wednesday, we decided to go back down and test some more. I had learned some stuff from just that one pass Saturday. Um, I learned some stuff that uh, I wanted to try. And I went out and made one pass to try to make the tire spin, and it did. But it uh, was acting kind of weird. After the burnout, the bike actually shut off on me, which never really happens. Like, I don't really have a lot of mechanical issues with this thing at the track. And uh, so it almost shut off, or it did shut off after the burnout, and then it wouldn't stay running, but it would kind of clean up. Like, it was just real weird, and I thought maybe it had a coil or something going wrong, or going bad. Uh, cause that's happened in the past before too, where, it, uh, I had a coil go bad and it would drop a cylinder randomly and it would clear up and this thing actually, it kind of cleared up a little bit and I'm like, well, I'm like, well, let's see if I can at least launch the thing. So, uh, uh, put in the beams, brought it up on the two step and, uh, went to launch the bike and spun the tire and that's what I wanted it to do. And then I just kind of rolled it out and then rode it down track and it seemed to run okay, but I noticed a couple of things that didn't seem right. So I got back to the trailer and uh, I quick changed plugs and I changed coils, fired the bike up and it seemed like it was running okay, but I was looking at my, uh, my uh, O2 correction factor. So on my dash, it'll show me what my target air fuel is and then how much it's correcting to maintain that. And my correction factor was like 30%, 35%. It was just all over the place. It was pulling the bug coming at me. So it was pulling a ton of fuel to try to maintain my target air fuel. And the thing was just, it wasn't happy. So I decided that I was gonna at least go try to do a burnout and see if it would clear up. Cause at this point I'm thinking it's just an electrical thing. And uh, see if I can get the coil or whatever was failing. I wanted to see if I could get it to uh, to duplicate it and actually like, you know, you know get, get like definitive, like bam, this is what's wrong. This is what's going on. So, uh, I'm, you know, I changed coils, changed plugs. Bike was running okay, but my O2 correction was just all weird. So that should have been my first clue. I should have honestly, full disclosure, I shouldn't have went up to try to make a pass. But at the same time, I was trying to figure out what was going on. So I wanted to at least try to see if I could do a burnout with it, whatever. Uh, I'm not afraid to wreck shit. I just, I do it all the time. I've done it a ton. But this motor's been good to me, and I probably should have been a little more careful. But, so I went up and did the burnout. It sounded a little weird in the burnout. Cut that short and then just rolled up, um, wouldn't stay running, was running on three cylinders. It was obvious this time now I'm down a cylinder. Uh, so I just rolled off, oil pressure was still good. And uh, I just rolled off, there's a turn off right up uh, by the starting line. So I, just, I rolled off from that, rolled back to the trailer. Trailer wasn't parked far away. And then uh, was just kind of irritated, trying to figure out what was going on. So I just, uh, I, I fired it up one more time just to listen to it. I could hear a weird putter in the exhaust. Um, it, motor wasn't knocking. I disconnected everything and rotated the motor over. And uh, oil pressure was great and the motor's not rattling, but it's got a miss or a dead a dead hole. And I could hear just the weird, weirdest putter in the exhaust. So I knew something wasn't right, loaded it up. And uh, that was the end of the night. So I just now got out to my shop. I didn't bring anything with me other than my phone. I was. Uh, uh, just dropping off some random stuff and then I decided to just get the thing shop reorganized and get the bike on the lift and do a little um, troubleshooting while I was here and I just did a compression test on it and one two and three are fine number four is dead nothing um, I pulled the turbo plenum off and looked down through the throttle body I could see that the uh, intake valves were closed all the way from what it, it appears but I honestly feel like from what I heard with the putter and the exhaust is I think I got an exhaust valve hanging open and this bike has got nothing fancy. It's a, you know, it's a 03, it's a 03 cases, but I run an 07, 08 head and they're just, they're really nice heads and uh, they don't require a whole lot of work to make them, you know, work real well. So I, uh, I still run the factory titanium intake valves. Uh, I run a stainless exhaust valve 
and then I run stock GSXR 600 springs, and they actually they have a little more pressure, spring pressure than the uh, 1000 springs, and then shim them up just a little bit, and then I uh, run the APE titanium retainers and factory keepers, and it's been together for like two years like this now, and it just seems to work pretty good, and. Like I said, I'm, I'm the king of eBay and reusing factory stuff. Um, you know, kind of finding the best of whatever's out there. And I think, honestly, it's either... I, I haven't totally got this thing apart, so I'm, I might be shooting myself in the foot. But I'm, I'm banking on my issues in the cylinder head, and it's not a major mechanical motor failure. And um, I think it's either... It's hanging a valve open, because I think either it popped a shim up and cocked it funny, broke a shim... Or it's actually the titanium retainers. Just I've heard horror stories before I even ever bought them for this motor, but it was uh, what I assumed was my only option at the time besides stock. And I had in the past I had cracked three stock ones, so I figured, what the hell, titanium's got to be better, right? And I made the SR71 out of titanium, so good enough for that, good enough for my motor. I thought. So I'm I'm guessing here, and this is my my diagnosing going on live here is uh, I think it's probably the retainers have been in there a while. And from what I've heard, characteristics of things that can go wrong with them, I think it's actually pulling the, the, the valve is, or the spring is pulling the retainer up over the keepers. So it's actually ovaling out the center where the keeper goes and it's hanging the valve open on the exhaust side is what I think is going on. So, I'm going to tear into this thing, get the motor out, and get the head off. Um, hopefully it's just a head issue. I've already ordered. I'm banking on this being an easy fix because i got two races coming up relatively quick. That If the, my bottom end is good, I'm putting this head back together. And I actually have already ordered um, kibble white springs, kibble white retainers, um, uh, APE uh, intake valves. And I'm hoping my exhaust valves are still good. Uh, I don't think anything hit. I run quite a bit of piston to valve clearance. So if it's just hanging open a little bit that, uh, you know, it's bleeding off compression, uh, I'm hoping I didn't make contact with the piston. If it did, it might be down a little longer than I thought. Um, but like I said, just rolling the motor over, uh, I don't hear anything interference-wise going on. Of course, it might have already self-clearanced itself. So I decided I don't do enough bumpy truck videos. So I thought I'd just get one in quick here while I'm headed up to the garage to work on the bike. So I've been out here about 20 minutes or so and got uh, got the fuel tank drained and uh, throttle bodies off. So just unhooking stuff. Got the majority of my wiring harness. Pretty simple stuff. Um, plumbing, everything's unhooked. Uh, I'll get ready. I'll dump the oil and uh, I still got to dump a little uh, water out of it yet. But um, yeah, keep going and uh, see if we can't figure out what's going on in that cylinder. So I got the turbo kit off, everything out of the way. I drained the oil and 
I think my suspicions of it being in the cylinder head are going to be correct because uh, there was nothing in the oil, so I don't think the motor is eating itself. And uh, I, I don't know, I guess I really didn't think that was the case initially anyways. But check this out. I'll see if we can get a good pick of this. I'm going to have to do this kind of one-handed because I can't get my head in there at the same time. So here we're up into number four cylinder. It's on the exhaust side. This is real hard to see because the camera does not want to focus real good. But if you look in here, you can see the shiny part of the valve there where it goes up into the guide. And then if you look to this valve over to the left side, there's not as much out. That valve's actually shut. This valve's actually hanging open. So what I originally thought was going on is it actually is what's going on. You see that difference from left to right? The shiny spot's just the wear from uh, valve guide. So I think there's my problem. And luckily, I have yet to see any, uh, any carnage as far as metal chipping or anything going on. So I don't think I have any major damage going on as far as piston valve, aluminum, or anything eating itself alive. So I think we're going to get it out the rest of the way. I got motor mount bolts are out already. Let's push that spacer in. Um, that's all loose back there. I'm going to drop it and then you guys will see what a fiasco this is for me to do a uh, one man deal, get the motor out and I'll probably do this motor, I'll get the bike off this lift because I'm running out of space. I have motors over here and bikes here and just, it's getting tight. So my bench, I want to save my bench for just doing my cylinder head. So I'm going to get the bike off the bench, I'll put the motor here in this area and then uh, I'll have all that space over there for just doing my head setup. So I'll probably drop the pan at some point and just uh, double check, but the oil that came out looked good. Pull the filter apart. Uh, if you ever use one of them filters, they're pretty fucking slick. So let's keep going. I just saw I had a, uh, a tie down strap that I put up over my shoulders and around the two motor bolts. Uh, I don't have the bike high enough to lower the bike or lower the motor down on the little scissor lift and then get the motor out. So what I do is just run a strap over myself and then just kind of arch my back up a little bit and it uh, just takes the weight off that little scissor lift and then just kick that out with my foot. Then I can set the bike or the, the uh, motor down lower and uh, get that scissor lift out and then I can actually get the motor out from under the bike. Uh, the reason I don't have the bike up higher is uh, I've tried doing it in the past and it just gets a little unstable with it on the lift. It gets a little tippy, so I just leave everything in the front wheel chock and then the rear stand so it's a little more stable. And this is where I uh, reevaluate all my, my life choices, why I choose to do this when it's about 95 degrees in my shop right now. 
So now this is where I'm going to end up with probably a shoe full of either water or oil every time. Pretty minimal. Still got me a little. All right, I'll get the bike out of the way and then I'll put the uh, motor on the lift and pull the head off. Something I like to do when I have the motor on the lift is uh, these little padded squares are for doing work floor area. Um, you get these at Harbor Freight. It's like 17 bucks for four or whatever. But when I'm dragging that to there, um, it's just nice to have something padded that the motor can sit on and I don't mess up my nice oil pan. And when I tip the motor one way, it doesn't bend tabs and scratch things and whatever. So, eh, cheap little trick.
so getting into it here, um, everything in the top end actually looks good as far as there's no debris in the motor, which is the biggest thing I wanted to see. Um, cams, everything came out looking great, but the first thing that caught my eye is number four cylinder where I've, I've had my suspicions. Let me get some of the oil out of the way here. Just kind of clean that up a little bit. And I'm like kind of confirming everything I've thought all along. So you can kind of look at these buckets, how this one's, you know, it's down a little bit. There's actually, it's hard to see, but there's a, it's stepped right here too. This one here, the bucket's high. You can actually see the difference from uh, right in here to right in here. It even looks like there was some weird shit going on. So uh, I'm going to tear this apart and we'll see what I find here. So we're into the motor now and I'm actually really happy with what I see. Just nothing, nothing crazy going on. This has been together for two years now and I'm gonna leave it. So I'll clean everything up a little bit. I'll get some of the water and stuff out of here where it's all puddled up. But, uh, I think my bottom half is gonna stay the way it is. So let's get cracking on this cylinder head issue. So I'm thinking my gamble that it's in the cylinder head is what paid off. Um, but what I'm looking at here is there's no marks of piston to valve interference. And these are the two troubled ones. And actually it's going to be this valve here is going to be the one that was hanging open from what I could see. I haven't torn the top side apart yet. So you'll get to see that as soon as I see it. But right now I'm just kind of leaving everything as it came apart. And I'm looking for any indications of interference. Um, everything looks good otherwise. And luckily... I'm thinking I'm gonna find my exhaust valves are all good because I didn't buy new ones. I got new intakes coming just because these are stockers, but I wanted to really be able to use these that are Vance Hines yet. So I wanted to be able to reuse these and so far it's so good. So let's check out the uh, piston. So there's number four piston. Yeah, 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 there's carbon buildup. It's got a bunch of miles on it, all right? But uh, what I'm looking at is down in that area there is uh, there's no piston to valve interference. Nothing got whacked. So we're good. So here's my trouble spot. 
this is exactly how I just pulled the bucket off of this cylinder. That shim was laying there, so it actually did spit a shim, kind of like how I thought. Um, it doesn't look like the, I uh, originally thought maybe the, uh, the keepers were pulling through the retainer. So it looks like they actually held up, but part of what I've heard about these retainers is they just, it doesn't seem like the pocket for the shim is actually deep enough. And granted, I probably was my mistake not running enough spring pressure to start with. So let's see what this uh, bottom side of the shim looks like. Try to grab it with something here. I'm pretty sure it's got a little dimple in it. Focus. Yeah, you can see there's a there's a ridge where it freaking hopped out and left a little half circle mark towards the bottom there. And you can see the retainer actually. The retainer took a little bit of a dinger right there. So it's about as close as you can get to uh, dodging a bullet as uh, you can get, I think. So I'm going to totally strip this head down now. Um, no more titanium. Uh, got new valve springs showed up already. So got these kibble whites to throw in. Um, I'm waiting for the intake valves to get here and retainers, new retainers to get here. So uh, I'll get this thing stripped. After further review, I realized I just lied to you guys. I uh, said I didn't think the retainers or the keepers were pulling through the retainer. Look at the difference here. This just caught my eye. This one's already pulling, pulling out. The spring height is actually the springs pushing the retainer up past the tip of the valve. So the keepers, I looked down in there, the keepers are still stuck in the valve but they're actually pulling through that retainer. So what I originally thought was kind of right on both counts. It actually was, it spit a shim and it's actually pulling through the retainer. So let's get her apart. So here's the culprit. Uh, the one on the left is the one that was actually the fail, the one that was failing, and the one on the right is actually it still seemed to be okay. Um, it's hard to see just because I'm getting bad light here. Let's try a flashlight. It's kind of hard to see in that bore. There's a step in there. So the step is almost gone. And this one, that step is still in there. That's how much it was starting to uh, pull up past the keepers. A little more noticeable on this side. See the difference in them two holes? How much bigger that one is than that one. So found the failure. This isn't I don't I'm not gonna say this is a manufacturer issue. This is probably just uh you know what's what was you know the chicken or the egg kind of thing. So did I not have enough valve spring that led to valve float that spit the shim that woggled that thing out of there? So who knows? But either way, I found the issue. Uh, I'm not going to reuse these just because I'm, I just don't know if uh, titanium is the answer. So we'll go with uh, some different style.
from Kibble White and uh, we'll get this thing all put back together.